Welcome to Vitality VIPs. Wellness Elite Channel. Let's start. Hi, I'm Dr. Lee who supports natural healing methods. I will talk about the symptoms that parasites can cause in our body, and at the end of this video, I will also explain how to use natural substances to support the treatment of parasitic diseases. I warmly invite you to watch. Let us remember that parasitic infections are not uncommon, and to make matters worse, the exact estimation of their frequency is limited. This is due to the lack of regular testing and limited reliability of diagnostic methods. For many people, the first alarming sign is the appearance of symptoms from the body that may suggest parasitic infection. The spectrum of these symptoms is very wide and may include symptoms that few people associate with parasites. Therefore, it is worth knowing a wide range of symptoms accompanying parasitic infections. So, what symptoms can these parasites cause in our body, and which of them should we be most concerned about? Remember that symptoms of parasitic infections can have a very varied character. They result directly from the parasitic existence in the digestive tract, but they are also a consequence of larval migration through the body or the release of toxins. Therefore, one of such manifestations is symptoms from the digestive system. The first symptom may be constipation, diarrhea, bloating, nausea, and even vomiting. It is possible to have abdominal pain and cramps that occur which is very characteristic regardless of the type of food consumed and the time of consumption. Sometimes women misinterpret such abdominal cramps as premenstrual tension syndrome or painful menstruation. In the first phase of parasitic infection, fever may also occur, as well as lymph node enlargement. However, it is possible that the infection will run without symptoms for a long time, and it will be difficult for us to detect its onset. Therefore, unexplained fever, especially in the summer, should be a warning signal directing our thinking to possible parasitic infection. Some people may also experience a lack of appetite, while others may have episodes of uncontrollable hunger, which is again very characteristic, especially for sweet snacks. Interestingly, despite increased appetite, weight loss can be observed. This is due to the fact that intestinal parasites feed on already digested food in the digestive system. Furthermore, there is another incredibly interesting explanation for why we lose weight with parasites in our body. Weight loss may be a strategy planned by our body to effectively fight parasites. I know that many people are now rubbing their eyes looking for a logical connection between these two phenomena. And now the explanation. It may seem that weight loss leads to a weakened body, making it more difficult to fight parasitic infection. However, Scientists have shown that parasitic infection is accompanied by an increase in cholecystokinin levels, which leads to weight loss and reduction of fat tissue deposits. And it is thanks to this that the level of another hormone, leptin, also known as the hunger hormone, is reduced. Leptin is secreted by fat cells. A lower level of leptin translates into further appetite suppression, but at the same time, an increase in the immune response of cells responsible for fighting parasites. Therefore, Weight loss in the course of parasitic infection should be perceived not only as a side effect of malnutrition but primarily as an adaptive mechanism serving to elicit an appropriate immune response directed against parasites. Another symptom that may suggest the presence of parasites in our intestines may be changes in the appearance of our stool. Various symptoms may appear, such as pinworms that have the form of small, white, and active threads with a length not exceeding 1 cm. In addition, during infection with tapeworm, segments of the tapeworm resembling pumpkin seeds may be visible in the stool. In the course of ascariasis, parasitic eggs may periodically appear in the stool. Parasitic infections may also be accompanied by skin symptoms. People who have a rash of unknown origin may suspect intestinal parasites. This is especially true for chronic rashes or hives with negative allergic test results, as well as generalized skin itching or eczema, which may indicate parasitic infection. Occasionally, angioedema, or swelling of subcutaneous tissue resulting from the widening of blood vessels and increased permeability of their walls, may also occur. The most common location of angioedema is the face, especially the eyelids, lips, and limbs. Another skin symptom of the presence of unwanted guests in our body may be skin paleness. This is the result of anemia developing during parasitic infection. In addition to skin pallor, Anemia may also manifest as pallor of mucous membranes, weakness, brittle nail plate, and increased hair loss. Anal itching, and in girls and women also itching in the genital area, is another symptom that may suggest parasitic infection. 
Moreover, skin redness may be observed in these areas. This is a particularly distressing symptom in the course of pinworm infection and, very significantly, it intensifies at night when the female migrates to the anal area to lay eggs there. People infected with parasites may also experience sleep problems, with restless sleep being a result of several factors. Firstly, itching of the skin and anal area may intensify at night. In addition, children may experience bedwetting, teeth grinding, as well as sleepwalking, which is motor hyperactivity during sleep. The aforementioned sleep problems, as well as anemia, may lead to the appearance of dark circles under the eyes. During the course of parasitic infections, there may also be a deterioration in mental well-being, which may take the form of both excessive arousal, irritability, nervousness, as well as depressive states and apathy. In children, parasitic infections may manifest as slow development. Delay in motor and psychomotor development, growth disorders, as well as problems with speech or cognitive functions have been observed in them. Remember also that parasitic infection may be accompanied by an increased susceptibility to other ailments, such as asthma or allergies. Additionally, as a result of weakened immunity, susceptibility to various viral, bacterial, fungal, or further parasitic infections may increase. People experiencing a deterioration in immunity and contracting infections, especially respiratory and sinus infections, should therefore consider undergoing diagnostics for the presence of parasites. Unusual symptoms of parasitic infections may also include muscle and joint pain. These symptoms result from the negative impact of toxins released by parasites on human tissues. Such symptoms should not be confused with muscle cramps or potassium and magnesium deficiencies, which can give similar symptoms. Therefore, if muscles or joints are still sore after supplementing the aforementioned elements, it is worth diagnosing for parasites. During an infection with human roundworm, an atypical cough and shortness of breath may also appear. These symptoms result from the specific life cycle of the parasite. Infection occurs after swallowing the eggs, after which the larvae hatch in the intestines and enter the lungs with the blood. From the lungs, the larvae travel to the bronchi and throat, where they can irritate the mucosa and cause coughing. In this way, the larvae reach the oral cavity, are swallowed, and reach the intestines, where they multiply. Therefore, a dry cough of unknown origin, wheezing, or shortness of breath should alert us. And how to diagnose parasitic diseases? Currently, medical diagnostics offer many diagnostic tests to detect parasites, such as stool tests or the determination of specific antibodies in the blood. Obtaining a positive test result or suspicion of parasitic infection based on the symptoms discussed today should prompt us to undergo deworming therapy. Importantly, such therapy can use natural ingredients, such as oregano oil, which clearly affects intestinal parasites. Scientists have shown that administering 600 mg of emulsified oregano oil in the form of dietary supplements for six weeks allowed for the elimination of intestinal parasites. However, please remember that there are different forms of oregano oils or extracts available on the market. Concentrated oregano oils are not the same as emulsified oregano extract suspended in olive oil, enclosed in a capsule, for example, in a dose of 150 mg. Fight against parasites can also be effective with dried papaya seeds. As scientists have shown, using a mixture of papaya seeds and honey in children resulted in parasite expulsion in just seven days. This example demonstrates that by consuming a wide variety of different foods, sometimes without our knowledge, the above plants heal our bodies from internal intruders. Pumpkin seeds are also a valuable support in the fight against parasites. They contain several active compounds with antiparasitic properties, including berberine and cucurbitacin. In vitro and in vivo studies have shown that pumpkin seed extract has an inhibitory effect on the hatching process of nematode larvae and reduces the mobility of intestinal parasites. Remember that berberine, which can also be found in barberry and Oregon grape, proves to be effective against numerous species of parasites. This makes this natural compound universal with a wide spectrum of antiparasitic action. I will make a whole episode about antiparasitic substances, so I will only briefly discuss the other plants. Studies have also shown the antiparasitic effects of sulfur compounds found in garlic and onions. Medical literature also mentions the antiparasitic properties of plants called mugwort and wormwood. The active sesquiterpenes in them can effectively kill parasites. Finally, according to scientists, Cloves can also be a natural support in the fight against parasites. Thanks to the eugenol content, 
they can inhibit the life cycle of parasites at various stages of their life. Meanwhile, black cumin oil can act against adult forms of parasites, as well as larvae and even eggs, due to the generation of oxidative stress directed against them. In the next episode, I will discuss natural substances that will help us fight parasites in more detail. And that's all from me for today. Take care about yourself and yours diet. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in next episode.